The first reading is from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. I will not be, it will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will now read Psalm 46 responsibly. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains shake in the depths of sea, though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose stream make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. The nations rage and the kingdoms shake. God speaks and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, regard the works of the Lord. What desolations God has brought upon the earth. Behold the one who makes war to seize in all the world, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. The third reading is from Romans chapter 3, verses 19 through 28. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction since we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ whom God put forward as a sacrifice to anointment by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine divine forbearness, he has passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous, and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? Is it excluded? By what law? By that of works? No. By the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John the 8th chapter. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? Jesus answered them, 
Very truly, I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Our gospel today promises us freedom if we will truly be disciples of Christ. In fact, Jesus promises that if we will learn, know, and follow the truth, we will be set free. Remember However, first we must become disciples. Jesus tells us that to be a real disciple is to accept what he has taught about the greatness of God and how terrible sin is. And to accept what is the real meaning of life. When we do this, we are beginning to take on the role of discipleship. In order to be a disciple, we must obey Jesus' teachings, study the scriptures, the Ten Commandments, and to listen for Jesus' voice in all of our decision-making. To be a disciple means to completely immerse ourselves in the word so that when we struggle with issues in life, it becomes our second nature to do what Christ's disciples would do. We must also continue to grow in our understanding of Jesus. If we are to be a disciple... We must keep on expanding our spiritual knowledge. To be free is to be a real disciple. To be a real disciple is to learn and study the scriptures. Being a disciple means keeping an open and inquiring mind. It is arrogant and certainly not good discipleship to stop our spiritual growth and to stop thirsting for knowledge at any time throughout our lives. Studying and being continually open to growth and learning will lead us to see the truth. Jesus said, you will know the truth. And the truth will make you free. And what a marvelous truth our studying and our growing gives us. We learn what to really value in our lives. It is so freeing to finally be able to discern what is good and worth sacrificing for separate from things in our lives that are not. You may be wondering just what we are freed from when we become a true disciple of Christ. Well, theologian William Barclay lists four things which can enslave us and in which discipleship frees us. Fear, the self, other people, and sin. As a disciple of Christ, we can be free from fear 
you will no longer be alone. Christ will be with you. Paul said to Timothy, God has not given us the spirit of fear. We are also free from ourselves. We are often our own worst enemies. But when we become Christ's disciples and he is with us and we are in him, we have the power and ability to be that person we can like and respect and live with. We are free from self, free from fear, and are free from the demands others put on us to be who they want us to be. We can spend so much of our lives trying to please everyone, doing what others want us to do, to be who others want us to be, worrying about what other people say or don't say. When we are freed as one of Christ's disciples, then we don't need to worry about what other people will think. And we can concentrate on what God wants. Mark Twain tells a story about a man who spent years in prison only to walk out one morning when he discovered that the door had never really been locked. We are often that way with our Christian discipleship. We come to worship, we receive forgiveness, and yet we leave with the same long face and guilt that we came in with. It is such incredible freedom to let go of that worry and concern about pleasing everyone. God is much more important than those things. There is a greater freedom, not only from fear, from self, and from others' demands, but also from sin. We often sin not because we want to, but because we just can't seem to help it. Our way of life, our habits and weaknesses, our shortcomings, often lead us into sin. Sins of hatred, selfishness, racism, prejudices can completely enslave us. We try, but we cannot free ourselves. To become one of the disciples is to free us from that terrible guilt, to be free of those sins. We can be freed to be the person that God has intended us to be. Jesus says to us today, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. A slave does not belong to the family always, but a son or daughter belongs there forever. If a son makes you free, then you will be really free. Jesus tells us that we must be disciples to be free. And then... He tells us that it is Christ himself who frees us. Are you truly one of his disciples? Amen. At this time, please share the peace with those around you. 
Uh, while remaining in your car, social distancing, honk your horn or wave, give some sign of peace to those around you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. In unity, let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Renew and inspire the church in the freedom of the gospel, O God. Where the church is in error, reform it. Where the church speaks your truth, strengthen it. Where the church is divided, unify it. Ignite in us the working of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
as the earth changes, as mountains shake and the waters roar. May we care for this planet as a holy habitation for all living things. Sustain all peoples and lands recovering from natural disasters of any kind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide areas of the world divided or traumatized by conflict, especially in our own land. Free all from slavery and human trafficking and protect all in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Release those living in bondage to debts, chronic pain, or addiction. Grant healing touch to those who are ill, especially those we name now in our hearts or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this family of faith, we give thanks for courageous voices that have remained firm in their commitment to the one who frees us from sin and death. Centered in your grace, unify us in the hope of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Even in death, you free us and give us a place in your house. We give thanks for our ancestors who have shown us truth and freedom, especially Martin Luther and those who work for the renewal of the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and unfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me again after supper he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. If you have any difficulty opening your communion cup, please honk your horn or wave your hand out your window. Mm -hmm. 
we will continue with the blessing. Mother in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thank you, God.